rated the number one podcast of all time. Of all time. Oh. Make sure you're ready because this is the podcast where you are guaranteed to learn virtually everything. You know, uh, uh, this is the Brian Callen, and I, I, I usually introduce myself when I do the ten minute podcast as Brian the Kid Callen. People say, Brian, why'd you get? How'd you get a name like the Kid? Like, who gave you that nickname? And I always say, I gave it to myself. Okay, <laughs> gave it to myself because I choose to believe that I have tight fitting skin and look insanely young. <laughs> Um, my guest, Hunter Motts, who you guys will be, uh, Hunter's, I think the smartest guy I know, at least he's a polyglot and he got his degree from Harvard in what? Uh, biochemistry. <laughs> and, uh, biochemistry and he studies languages. I'm studying languages now, but I'm studying groups of languages. Go fuck yourself. Go <laughs> seriously, go fuck yourself. And, uh, we have, um, and Hunter's going to be helping me get guests and cause Hunter knows far more interesting people than I do. One of whom is David Kwong, ladies and gentlemen. David, quite fucking lame. David Kwong is uh, is uh, he has a name like that because he's Jewish and Chinese. That <laughs> means he's smart as shit, everybody, <laughs> huh? Huh? Um, it means he makes things and he controls all the money. <laughs> oh God, racist humor, <laughs> racist humor on Brian Gallen show. Uh, David, um, before you even talk, I'm gonna just uh, I'm just gonna go through some things. David was coined the illusionist for intellectuals by the Wall Street Journal. Makes me want to punch him in the fucking face, to be honest with you, but I like it. Also is Hollywood's favorite trickster. But um, you have studied, you went to Harvard as well. Yes. You studied the history of magic. Yeah, I, I was a history major. They don't exactly let you declare. Well, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> history of magic. I, I, was a history, I, was a, I was a history major too, So, but I didn't study magic. But, but I know that... Um, I know that David Blaine, who I had on the podcast recently, loves magic and loves the history of magic and has a library full of books, most of which he can't read because they're written in Latin. Yeah. So I think he just likes having them. <laughs> but you actually have really studied – I mean, how far back have you gone with magic? Well, first of all, I, I think anyone who truly loves the art uh, – becomes familiar with with the with the giants because uh, it's reverence that, for that your stand, ancestors yeah on the shoulders that they stand on and and um you know blaine has an amazing collection uh his uh, his friend and partner bill kalush has an incredible library in New that's York. who really is the guy yeah. yeah david copperfield has an incredible museum in uh in las vegas um and i have like four books at home but <laughs> but, I, but i love he's a pup he's a pup um but yeah i i, I did study it in college and, and continue to uh to study it now and what's funny is that that the, the harvard history department is now completely on board with uh with with saying that i studied the history of magic <laughs> yeah oh, because right? they're like look you can be a history major and you don't have to become a lawyer you can be a <laughs> yeah, magician yeah, yeah yeah you know that's actually so awesome. i go back and I, I perform for the department all the time <laughs> do you really pick yeah. a card everybody pick yeah. a card yeah. Uh, well, what's funny about magic is like David Blaine's next specialty is doing magic for uh, Bill Gates and and Stephen Hawking. And, and what, what's funny is that magic is the great equalizer. Everybody goes, "How the fuck did you do that?" And that's kind of what's so fun that no matter how intellectual, how many books you've read, you can still be wowed and fooled and and fall for the illusion. I mean, it's kind of like brings everybody together. It's it's really interesting to see the reaction. Um, my my buddy Brett Ernst does a joke about the only time black people are not cool is when they see magic. Cause they're like, oh shit, <laughs> what the fuck, you know? And 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 in a way, th- what's funny about watching his special, like if you see like certain people from different demographics, they do uh, react differently. Maybe one might, one oh, group yeah. might be way more, maybe one more. Just, but I, like like no, I notice that a lot of black people when he does their he, they run away from the trick. Yeah. Whereas, but. <laughs> But white people will do the same thing. They'll walk away from the trick. So yeah. it seems to me like depending on what your socioeconomic, what your cultural background is, we all react in a, we all react to the same in magic, which we all go, how did you do that or something? But we, we do express it maybe a little more forcefully depending on what ethnic group <laughs> well, we come I, from. Well, I lived in Hong Kong for a while, and uh, the Asian audience has their own set of reactions too. It's, it's much more contained. It is. It's mm-hmm. subdued, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. I love it. It's frustrating. Oh, it's hard. Shit. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, what do they do usually? What, what is the – You know what? Um, there's, there's just this kind of um, – this gasp of awe mm. 
that seems <laughs> like just look at any kind of YouTube video. They and cover it, their always, mouths. It's always just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's, that's so funny. funny. That's I so, heard that noise I don't before know on the internet. I'm not, not sure. Yeah, where. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's Asians having sex, but uh, that's that but is. Anyway, I can make that joke because I'm Asian. I was going to yeah. say, yeah, okay, yeah. We, we've gotten very racist on this show already, <laughs> uh, or risky. But um, is there any? Is there a magic trick? That is the greatest magic trick of all time. Well, how do I approach that? There's there's legendary, there's there's mythical legendary tricks. The you know one of my favorites is the um, the East Indian rope trick, and that's uh, you know centuries and centuries old, where no one's actually seen it, but they know somebody who has seen it. Uh, and that's, uh, awesome, you know, Li- all uh, liars. And by that's the way. and that's when a a, a rope uh, stands straight up. You know, often it's 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 conjured that way by a snake charmer, mm-hmm. and then it yeah. stiffens, and then uh, there's different accounts of it. But often the uh, the fakir will, um, or the the faker, however you say it, will uh, will climb up and disappear into the clouds. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. so um, yeah, it never happened. But keep going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but my best know. friend saw it, so or, it must be real. Can you do that trick or no? I can't. It's been yeah. done. It's been done famously on stage. Oh, it yeah, has. Yeah, yeah. But, oh, but but but. but uh, I don't. I don't anything, yeah. anything you can think of can be can co- can be figured that's, out. That's 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 a good way to put it. Uh, we um, we often think of the effect first, and then we reverse engineer the method. Mm. So you're a lot like Area 51. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. What what is the? Um, the, the I mean, the, how often? And I don't know. You can't reveal too many things, but how often are things done with mirrors? Uh, it's a technique. It, we use them sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Brian, um, you're asking the you girl seen, to give up. It's her secret. It, it, you, you, know it's her, you should never do you know, that. Now you see me, which is uh, you know, holding strong in the box office. Um, yeah, you, you were – what did you do on Well, that? I was the head magic consultant on it. So that this thing has been uh, and who's in that know, my baby for years. Uh, who's in it? Um, the four magicians are Jesse Eisenberg, Woody Harrelson, Isla Fisher, right. Dave Franco – uh, Mark Ruffalo's uh, the FBI agent that yeah. uh, pursues them. You got Michael Caine and Morgan Freeman as villains. How's it doing in the box office? It's 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 great. It's on track to, you know, knock on wood, make a make a hundred million. Dude, that's yeah, so that's awesome. awesome. And you and you um you were the magic consultant on it. Yeah, I worked. Um, Which meant what? Well, I I started uniquely, I think, uh, because of my experience uh, as a development executive in Hollywood. I started with the, with the screenwriters, and they, mm. they brought me in to, to work on the story. So um, there was a brilliant um, original script by uh, Ed Rykor and Boaz Yakin, and then uh, Ed Solomon came on to write, and I, and I worked with, with those guys to shape the, um, the magical heists. You know, they needed these, these methods for robbing banks using, uh, oh, neat. using yeah. magic. So, I can't wait to see that movie, actually. And then, um, of, of course, I went on set, and I was on, in New Orleans for six months teaching – all these actors, uh, sleight of hand, and then building illusions. Do you think and, that? Do you think that the stuff that happens in the movie uh, could ever be used? Theoretically, I guess. Uh, there are principles that could certainly be used, but you know, I don't want to spoil too much. But there are right. there's some mirrors in that too. So, okay. Uh, you'll, you know, to get back to your original question. Now, wow. you you originally worked as well as a development executive at DreamWorks. Is that right? Yeah, I was in their story group, uh-huh. uh, and uh, and then I ended up working uh, for Louis Leterrier, who was the director. So I was developing the film with him. Well, see, this is what's interesting about you. You're not just a musician, a, ma- a magician. You you are also somebody that in and I watched this um, on on this clip that you gave me, which yeah. is fascinating. You can and, and you can create a crossword puzzle. And you'll get somebody to pick a card. They pick the card. They don't tell you what it is. And then not only do you create a crossword puzzle, um, which usually takes a long time. Like the guy at the New York Times was saying, crossword puzzle. Editor, yeah, Will Shorts. Will Shorts, yeah. Said that, you know, just somebody who can come up with a crossword puzzle that quickly is is incredible in itself. But the guy in the crossword puzzle gives you the name of your card within the crossword puzzle. So you're very verbal and maybe even a savant. In that sense, I like using French words. <laughs> savon. And, yeah, savon. A savon. <laughs> uh, but but um, that's that's fairly unique and really it's, – it's like it feels as though that would be two different mindsets. One is a little bit more uh, – well, you're a performer and, and the other is somewhat clinical. There's a craft to magic, of course, which takes drilling and practice. Mm-hmm. And then 
the other side is this idea of, uh, w- w- I mean, why crossword puzzles? What's What the hell got you involved in that? Well, th- this crossword puzzle trick is my signature uh, effect. And um, so, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, I basically have a playing card selected, and I make a crossword puzzle as quickly as I can, and I hide hidden messages in the puzzle. Um, why did I cross-pollinate those together? I think it's because... Um, Magic and puzzles are just inherently related. They're, mm. they're both ways of like oh, that's challenging yeah. the human mind and trying to, uh, you know, uh, explain the, explain the trick because you guys can go watch it. Um, I'm I don't I can't do a crossword puzzle. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I suck. <laughs> Start with We're Monday. Make you Brian People Magazine. Start with People Magazine. Start with People Magazine. <laughs> yeah. How about this? Not going to do them at all. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> but my father's obsessed. Oh, you're with more them. of a Sudoku guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm Sudoku. <laughs> okay. I'm more of a Kung Fu guy, bro. Yeah. I'd rather fight. But uh, but um, the, the, a lot of the people I have on that, that I hang with, a lot of people that I, I have on this podcast, wouldn't do a crossword puzzle because they're just not smart enough. All right, they're just not verbal the enough. Mon- the Monday New York Times crossword puzzle is totally accessible. Is it really? Yes, it gets harder through the week. Okay. Uh, Saturday's the hardest. Yeah, that's Sunday, the holy grail, right? S- yeah, Sunday kind of resets, goes back to like. Flip. I would imagine, though, like anything else, there's a technique to crossword puzzles. Yes, it's all pattern recognition and you get familiar with uh with the clues and the more and you can do you it. usually get a crossword puzzle like the saturday crossword puzzle can you fin- fill that in pretty quickly saturday's tough saturday yeah. can can sometimes take me all day it depends how, how hard it is but you know monday by the way you know, with, i love that david's like saturday can take me all day what do you what did you do your saturday i wrestled with the new york times crossword, crossword puzzle, puzzle all day long beat it. and i beat it i <laughs> slew it and then i worked the magic trick into it so fuck you <laughs> But you, um, I, the other thing is you've also done designed New York Times crossword puzzles yeah, and yeah, L.A. Yeah. Times crossword puzzles and all sorts of – I mean there's – I had one in the New York Times uh, about a month ago. It was a Friday puzzle, and uh, I hid the uh, – I didn't hide it. I, I, I put the Seven of Diamonds in the puzzle uh-huh. as a like, secret advertisement for uh, Now You See Me. So. Oh, that's oh, awesome. very cool. We were, we were actually hiding playing cards all over the media. So if you look at the Now You See Me one sheet, the billboard, mm-hmm. the, the poster that's up – uh, in Dave Franco's right hand, he's palming the Ace of Diamonds, and there's mm. all over the the web and in print, you can find the Ace through the King of Diamonds. So that's the Seven of Diamonds was in the the New York Times crossword. Why why diamonds? Why was that significant? Uh, we called it the Diamond Heist Challenge. Okay, you know, steal and that all was the diamonds. In, wasn't that in honor of like the, wasn't there a heist that actually happened or something like that? Uh, well, there have been a lot of famous diamond heists. Oh, but, thank yeah, you yeah, for yeah, clearing yeah, me yeah, in yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Diamonds have been stolen. Di- diamonds have always been stolen. <laughs> yeah. Diamonds are the number one stolen product forever. <laughs> yeah. Stone, I should say. <laughs> it just seemed like st- stealing diamonds are better than stealing what, what's clubs funny? or spades. <laughs> <laughs> what's funny was... Find all yeah. the shovels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the shovels. At Home Depot, the Home Depot heist. <laughs> what's funny about being around the two of you, you guys are so smart, I, I feel like I should speak this way as though I'm really intellectual. <laughs> Like I'm William F. Buckley. Brian's sipping some Earl Grey right now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> With a slice of lemon. Exactly. Hot. Not tequila, as I yeah. usually do. <laughs> when you hear stories about like like these wizards and their kings, and I wonder if wizards were the original magicians who had people believing that they were actually magic. Is there any truth to that? You haven't read that? No, I... What are your thoughts on... No idea what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Merlin, Merlin, Merlin. What are your thoughts on fucking wizards? (laughs) (laughs) Harry Potter, yay or nay? Well, you know, when David was doing magic in Haiti, they were wearing things on their heads in this village um, because they were afraid that their spirits were going to come into their head. And and there are certain parts of the world where... I mean, by the way, not just Haiti. I was with a (laughs) stuntman, and he goes, I don't know, that guy, I think that guy's actually magic, bro. I wouldn't be around him. And I go... Excuse me. And he goes, yeah. He, I think he might be tapped into some satanic shit. Hey, bro, you got to stop talking to me. I was like, yeah, you. So you believe in magic, do you? But it's really powerful, man. Yeah, I, I've seen those uh, those clips, and, and Blaine goes goes there, and and uh, people are astonished with what he can do. Yeah, and um, it reminds me. There's a really cool um, story from magic history. Uh, uh, Jean Robert Houdin, and Houdin sure, is, sure. is the Houdin. magician. From from whom Houdini took his name. Oh, right. Houdini. The, adding the I was like meant like Houdin. Right? Oh, really? So so oh, Houdin was uh, Robert Houdin was considered the um, the father of modern magic. He he, re- he took magic off the streets. He put on you know evening clothes, white mm-hmm. tie and tails, and would perform in a theater right mm. in in France. And um, he went down um, uh, to Algeria. Uh, this is nineteenth century to 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 quell the 
uh, Algerian rebellion. Mm. And it was really very much like this, the same kind of thing. It was to demonstrate to the to the local uh, populace there that that their their shamans were fakers were feeble <laughs> yeah. compared to what the, the French could do. Wow. Oh my yeah. god. Wow. Yeah. And Big did it magic. work? It worked. Fuck, yeah. dude. He put on a, a magic show and you know, he had mastered um electromagnetism and there were just there was there were so many things that people didn't quite understand yet. That's really yeah. great. Yeah. That would that would be very scary. If you don't know any better, when somebody seems to be tapped into the sort of supernatural, you know, that's the one yeah. thing you have trouble fighting. Yeah. You know, I mean, that 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 feels like, uh, well, I would abuse the shit out of that. that <laughs> is there is there a magician among all of you who is considered just the one who people kind of, you know, when he walks into a room that you, you kind of the, the awe inspiring one, the greatest music magician period. Is there a greatest magician living right now? Would that be David Copperfield? I mean, Copperfield is an incredible, incredible success and a, and a legend, and he still performs 500 shows a week. It's unbelievable. He, he performs 500 shows a week. Not a week. <laughs> a year. A year. A year. Uh, you said yeah. a week. Yeah. I, you said yeah. a week, which is its magic That's trick. That's how magical it's, uh, he is. He can be in 500 he does places. Exactly right. yeah. he, does 15, he does 15 a week. 15 a wow. week. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. so he loves it, and he does it in Vegas? Yeah, at the MGM. So he just wow. can't get enough. He just loves performing. It's not the money. He's obviously got a lot of money. He yeah he, he definitely doesn't yeah he just lo- he just loves it he's and he's always innovating and putting incredible new stuff in his show, and Penn and Teller are uh, I know I revere them a lot they they are uh, I love are they, are they legit magicians oh or? yeah of course yeah, yeah. and and the, and the way they break down magic intellectually is, is incredible I haven't and seen David it. Blaine you know those those guys are the are the real legends and um, and Blaine as well oh yeah my boy yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know a lot and a lot of people rag on Chris Angel yeah but. I don't. I do because I don't like the way he dresses. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's like. But you know who does? Most people under the age of twenty-four. That's right. Yeah. And and I and I got to say I respect Chris for bringing magic to a you know to a younger generation. And I'm sure he's a good guy. I'm sure if yeah. I had him on my podcast, I'd love him. I mean, I'm yeah. sure you know. I, I don't. I don't like making fun of anybody, especially who's really successful like that. The guy obviously worked his ass off. Yeah, I mean, looks like, great. If I had a body like that, maybe I'd wear like uh, netting or whatever it is he wears. <laughs> he gets criticized a lot for not innovating things, but oh, okay. So yeah. he, he he takes he takes magic from I'm, yeah, and I, I'm not going to participate in that debate. But but I <laughs> yeah. but I will say that I you know, I, so I think correct. any anyone anyone that unlike us anyone that can uh, <laughs> deliver magic in a new way you know gets my respect, and that's what that's I'm the trying to... that's the whole name of the game when it comes to anything artistic, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, stand up. I write jokes all the time where. I kind of I, I know they would work, but they don't necess- They're a little reductionist. They're derivative. They're not mine, and so I don't do them. You know, and if I ever do do them, a little part of me dies. It's a very <laughs> it's a very tough. What is that? Very little competitive part, world. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> yeah, the magic magic world is, is that that overlap happens all the time, and people uh, accuse each other of stealing tricks and and methods and or not giving credit to the proper person who came up with it. And, well, you know, are you and, are you interested in being a magician, like a very famous magician? Or are you interested in doing? You're working on lots of different things. Story? Or you want to be a screenwriter? You know, it's it's just this ever evolving hybrid right now. Um, you're trying to find it. No, I think I've found it. I've, it's this fusion of magic and puzzles, and it, I'm not sure whether it's the sh- my one man show will be a Vegas show or an off Broadway New York show. But it's um, and then in addition, you're also producing other movies. Like you've got a project lined up with J.J. Abrams, mm-hmm. um, nice. and then you just consulted on this Jeremy Renner movie. Yeah, it's a James Gray directed film called The Immigrant, uh-huh. and it's a um, uh, an Ellis Island story. Uh, Marion Cotillard is a Polish, I think, immigrant, and it's about her struggle She's in, cute. in the um, the Bowery of New York. And, mm-hmm. and Jeremy Renner uh, plays a like a turn of the century uh, uh, magician who uh, is kind of her her knight in shining armor. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Now, the the other thing that I wanted to ask you as well is is that I know that you consulted on Paranormal Activity four, yes, and that the director didn't want to use CG to create the levitation effect. He actually wanted to, like, do it for real with magic. Yeah. Henry Joost and Ariel Schumann directed uh, Paranormal 4 and 3. And uh, I actually pitched this to uh, Henry uh, over a Scrabble game. Uh (laughs) We were playing Scrabble at the Roosevelt Hotel. Um, 
You play Scrabble. So cool. You're probably really good at Scrabble. So, oh, he knows some really good Scrabble words too. Yeah, yeah. You're, oh you're, yeah, we can we can do a little. No, game. I'm not playing you in Scrabble. But uh, <laughs> fucking, I'll jujitsu yeah. with you. I'm not fucking doing Scrabble. I'll in throw fact, we'll play, tiles if at I your start head. losing, I'll, I'll just throw you in a headlock. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, Henry and Rel. Uh, sorry, that's Ariel, but we call him Rel. Oh right, natural. Um, natural. If you're in the know, if Jesus, you're in the know, you call dropping him Rel. French yeah, names. Yeah. And Those guys directed Catfish and. You know, Catfish TV show is incredibly successful right now. Um, <laughs> but anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, yes. Uh, Paranormal, that whole series, um, they describe it as a, a celebration of practical effects. Hmm. And, and you know, that, by the when, way, when the, the, the first sheet, one scared the shit yeah, out of me. Yeah, okay? Scared the shit yeah, out of me. Yeah, it was so good. But, I mean, but, you know, those, and Brian's a brave man, so, but those you know. Sheets, brave shit. You know the, bed, <laughs> the bed sheets sliding off the bed, you know, that's someone with some fishing line. Like, yeah. it's, it's really... Simple stuff. It's, it's simple stuff. And, and yeah. well, why didn't he want to use CGI? Why, why, just for money? And does he want to do a real magic trick or what? You know what? It's not, it, money is always an issue. They are... Uh, they're low budget. They're low budget, which is, you know, incredible that, that what they, what they uh, churn out at the box office. Yeah. But, but it's also like they want to adhere to that philosophy of... of Does your business card say thing. puzzle maker, magician, producer... Story what does it say? It says um, the Misdirectors Guild on it, oh. which is my uh, yeah. yeah. You like yeah. that? It's a little yeah. play on a little play on words. Yeah. For you. Do you play an instrument? Uh, piano. You do. Yeah. Is that from your Chinese side or your Jewish side? Both. Probably both. Yeah. I mean, you do. You they were both music, musicians or um, you just you grew up you, you you grew up and they said, guess what you're getting? Straight A's. <laughs> guess what else you're getting? You're getting fucking lessons in piano. Yeah. All right. And guess what you're not getting a lot of? Sunlight. Yeah. All right. Because it's better to have a big brain than brown skin. And Let, cancer. Let's, let's play a game. Let's play a game. Yeah. How many times over the course of this podcast will Brian confuse the word musician and magician? And magician. <laughs> we're, up, we're up to two. We're I up know. To two. I know. But that's yeah. Brian's only magic trick. It's all it's the same confusing shit. Words. All the same shit, bro. <laughs> same shit. I hear uh, that like. Probably five times a week. But, but so I, mean, I hear you're a musician. <laughs> musician. <laughs> musician. Although I have to say that if you're you you've obviously got a, a big brain, you play the piano, and you can do magic. You're doing and not a bad looking kid, so you're doing pretty well. I mean, you know, do you ever kind of bring your piano on stage or just to the that, coffee that shop? Is, that's in the works. The yeah. uh, the playing the piano and performing magic at the same time. There are girls that are going to kind of be into you when you're multifaceted like that. I took the piano for a year and yeah. didn't go anywhere with it. And I realized that I had to be reborn. It's like boxing. My buddy's a pro boxer, and he started showing me some stuff. And I was like, oh, I got to – oh, no, I had to start this when I was 13. Oh, I'm not – oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I see. I'm going to get punched in the face to get better? Nah, never going to happen. It's like my, my, my uh, instructor was this uh, concert pianist, and she was uh, from China, and she – she was teaching me these things, and I went. I knew enough about from martial arts, just like drilling and what it takes, or just jujitsu, like how how long it takes to make it your own language. And as I'm playing the piano, I was like, "Oh, I got it. Oh, hold on. Oh, I don't have time for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not. Oh, no, no, I'm too old now. Fuck this. I don't yeah. give a shit." And I, I was trying to write a play about a piano player, uh, a shitty play. Uh, uh, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. I would, you would not have been a story consultant on it because yeah, it didn't right. go anywhere. Because the story didn't go anywhere. You would have gone like this. What the fuck is this? It turns out that to blend talents, you have to have them first. That's right. That's exactly. Yeah, you do have to, you do have, to have talents first. Um, but you have cross pollinated these two things, man: magic and Three uh, things. And, and crossword puzzle and and uh, movies and, and movies. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say actually that they're all forms of storytelling. That's kind of the the, the glue that that, that bonds, bonds all of them. Yeah, yeah. there bonds, are there bonds. are magic <laughs> tricks that you see that you know um, always amaze people, like reading minds, quote unquote. Uh -huh. You know, pick a card and then you tell them what card it is. Dave is doing that right now. He is reading our minds. He's reading my mind. That's right. My mind is which really, is why I'm wearing tinfoil. Uh, my mind is fucking easy <laughs> to read. My mind basically is just you know. Girls, food, <laughs> and fucking sleep. <laughs> you know. I think that's everyone's mind, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. What? What? Give me. Give me some books. To, are you reading any books right now? We always recommend books on this uh, podcast. I'm not. Uh, I don't read. No. <laughs> that's a, you know what? That's I'm a great answer. No, no, I'm embarrassed to say that. I don't that, read. Not a reader. You know what? I I I, can't, I haven't read a book for pleasure in years because when you're reading screenplays all the time, right? That's what reading gets associated with work. It's, you know, it's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. unfortunately, that's just how it is. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when I don't have to read, I 
rather do a crossword puzzle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can you tell? Can you tell? The, and since one of those takes all day, you know, all day, <laughs> it's yeah. a major well, since commitment. one of them is uh, all day, yeah. but I'm not playing the piano or doing a crossword puzzle. I lock my room in the. I lock myself in a room for 24 hours exactly. to do the Saturday crossword puzzle. That's exactly right. Uh, it takes it takes great patience, though. I guess you were you were raised with the notion of just because something's hard doesn't mean you quit, <laughs> which yeah, I hear a yeah. lot of. You I, know? I I definitely um, I, it echoes in my uh, in my mind that I always have to go the extra mile. I think I remember my my mother keeps saying that. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard anybody who's successful who didn't grow up with that sort of ethos or that, or that yeah. work ethic. I mean, you know, the, the, uh, except for Kim Kardashian, except for Kim Kardashian <laughs> made $62 million last year, something crazy, but, but cause she's got a bone structure that cuts light. Well, God oh, it's not her. so much the bones. It's what's on top of them. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> I don't, not that I noticed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's true. Is that the I technical mean, term? Badonka dunk. Yeah. That's in the medical literature. You yeah. can find it. Naturally. That's not going to make the Sunday crossword. <laughs> Badonka that's dunk. You, that's what you think. Badonka dunk. I've been talking to Will Shorts. Sending him recommendations. Like, get this word in there. Yeah. Oh. Have you read Have you read Hunter Mott's book, The Straight A Conspiracy? I haven't read it, but yeah. I'm. But you I'm know very, about it. Oh yeah, yeah. He he and Katie are good friends of mine. And because very, Hunter's very Hunter's book, you guys, you've been on the podcast before. Basically, subscribes to the idea or or the, the the notion is that there's no such thing as being smart. You just gotta your emotion. The emotional context in which you approach something has everything to do with whether or not you're going to learn something. I'm taking French from Michel Thomas, the late ah. Michel Thomas, and the first thing he says when you learn French, he says the first thing you need to do is relax. Yeah. And 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 here's the rules: no trying to memorize. Well, that's that's the thing is you focus on trying to understand it rather than just like remembering random facts. Like, I'm obsessed with deconstruction, the deconstruction yeah. process of learning. Tim Ferriss, who's been on the podcast too, uh, is is a big fan of that. Michel Thomas, obviously, I I take jujitsu from a guy, um, my buddy Kieran, who I've never had anybody break down the principle of grappling. Which mm-hmm. you know, I know is not the most inc- exciting thing, but it, what's fascinating about it is more than the grappling is, you know, he can he can beat the shit out of so many guys, and he just says control the head and hips, control the head and hips, everything's mm-hmm. head and hips. If you control the head and hips, no matter who it is on a human being, they're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. There, you build a you build a a house from that that sort of platform. It's exactly like writing a script or a book. You you need to know what you're writing about. There's got to be. There's got to be a platform and a basis for that. And I would imagine magic is the same thing or any any technique that you have for something is probably, like you said, you deconstruct from you want the effect and you go backwards. Yeah, and as you said at the very beginning of this uh, podcast, was, uh, you mentioned preparation, and it's it's really all preparation, right? We we often say that something will take you know, hundreds of hours of practice, but it plays out in a performance in only a couple of seconds. Yeah. And it's just to make – it's like anything, making yeah, something man. look effortless. and. And I think that applies to my show and my, and the puzzle component of my show in particular. Uh, I've spent so much time memorizing all these patterns, uh, you know, that, that I can solve these, create these puzzles in real time on stage. You, you know, this is very strange. I mean, in a way, it's odd. Like, your your interest is very unique. Well, yeah, thanks. I, I think I'm the first one to really... Um, frame magic in this way and when i when i launched my website um a, f- uh, a couple of years ago what's your website david kwong magic.com yeah little plug thank you k-w-a-n-g david kwong magic.com but but the point is is that that someone said you have to choose between magic and puzzles you can't have them both up there and uh you know and i wasn't sure at first but now it just like i would have said the same thing there's a fusion now you know and it's a it's really because I think magic and puzzles are inherently related, uh, and they're both ways of you know. But I mean, what, when, what did you want to do when you were younger? Well, I've always I've always loved magic, but I was never willing to take that leap of faith to be a professional magician. And I think it's because you know you have two parents who are PhDs. Oh, you're both your parents <laughs> yeah. PhDs. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? No wonder. You go to, oh God, what a what a go nightmare. To, you go to you go to Harvard, you, you know, <laughs> and it's just kind of like what you, now, now you're gonna what you're a magician. magician. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a hard thing to do. And I've always held on to the conventional job. I always like I wanted to be in the milieu of entertainment. So I, I did HBO. So he became and, a development executive at DreamWorks Animation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah so uh, I, I always held down that desk job, right? Um, and really, it, it's all kind of like happened by surprise. Like I think my, 
my subconscious was like my passions. They were, they were like working. But this is know. interesting to me because, you know, a lot of people get caught and I have a lot of people come to me and say, well, you know, I'm trying to be sensible or, or you know, parents want you to do something sensible. I, mm-hmm. I don't want my kids to be actors. I'm going to clip those wings right quick, <laughs> you know. But you can't, you know, but there is something called passion and there is also something called, you know, a calling, you know, when, you, when you've got that, that voice, that inner compass that's telling you to do something that, because you think about it anyway. A lot of times there's something you think about whether you want to or not. It's on your mind all yeah, the time. Yeah, you know what I would say, though? Like, I couldn't have plotted out this this trajectory hmm. but everything i've done has been relevant and yeah. you and 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 i just i found a way to to make everything work and taking those skills that i learned in development story structure and character and narrative and applying those to magic and getting involved i mean really my the springboard for me uh was was hollywood was like working on the movies mm-hmm. and i was able to just just for fun on the side i started consulting on hollywood magic projects and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden now you see me went into production mm-hmm. and all of a sudden i found myself quitting my desk job and then all of a sudden i'm doing magic full time yeah. so i couldn't have plotted it out but you know everything everything's relevant and i and now i'm now i'm like on a soapbox here but i feel like a liberal arts education where you're learning you know all different from all different fields and you're learning from your peers and you know it all kind of comes together and you keep all these doors open until your passions can I, I direct agree. You. I and agree. That's I, also, I mean, that's what Steve Jobs really talks about in his Stanford commencement speech, right? You know, because he tells the story about how, you know, when he dropped out of college, he was taking this calligraphy class. And, you know, he was like, I have no idea where there was, this was going to lead. I was couch surfing. I was broke and all of that sort of stuff. But then years later, it all fits together because as he's developing basically all the words processing programs, he's like, oh, fonts, calligraphy. Like, I thought this was so cool. Let's put this in. Wow. And that's why all computers now have all of these crazy fonts because he took a random calligraphy class that he then later brought in. And I think the interesting thing, too, is, you know, because obviously I also get – parents talking to me all the time about like "Mm, my kid's interested in this thing but i don't see how that's going to lead to a job but the thing that we're also aware of is is that what we really need in order to succeed nowadays is innovation Mm -hmm. right but at the same time we're like where does innovation come from well really where innovation comes from is people like dave kwong who have three different interests that they then blend together and they produce something that we've never seen before they produce mm-hmm. you know a crossword puzzle magic trick or a scrabble magic trick or a story yeah or a story yeah. exactly or steve jobs who takes like random calligraphy puts it with computers and i mean that was the, the i'm such yeah. a huge believer in that you know it's funny you st- you're talking this way because i i spent you know i spend way too much time r- rolling um what's the matter no, i want to sit straight up now oh go ahead can I just do this? Bring it up, bring it up. But but um, I I just I just feel as though um, you know I I I why am I rolling around on a mat and and working on like submission techniques or playing the drums or learning French when you know and and then doing stand up? Well, it all it it, it re- I'm just a huge believer that it finds its way into whatever you're really trying to do and express, and that's why. I'm such a huge believer. I always tell like young people or even anybody who is kind of trying to find themselves or whatever. I can't stand the notion of like, well, I'm trying to find myself. Look, find yourself through action. What do you want to do? What do you want to be doing? You know, what, what is it you want to do? What is it that you want to do? What, what is it you, you know, you can go through what your desire is. You want a big house and all that shit. But I'd rather say, what, what is it you want to do on a daily basis? Or what do you want to look back on and say you can, you've accomplished? Do you want to know that you, you've spent, my, my, my buddy's a Marine and he's going to college and he didn't know what to do. And I said, what do you want to come out of college with? And, well, uh, I said, do you want to know, do you want to be able to speak Spanish? Yes. Do you want to be able to play the piano? Yes. Mm-hmm. Go that way. Try that. Try that. Do you, you, you know, Try to do that, and then other things will, I think, you, you will have not only context, but probably you will learn the art of learning. You will, through those endeavors, you'll learn how to approach something in a better way. You'll learn how to deconstruct the learning process and become more of a sponge. That's really the way it is, I think. I, I mean... I just think uh, I agree with you, everything you, Brian says. Do you fucking Harvard <laughs> nerds agree or not? What is with the silence? <laughs> I told you. Just Brian forward. has Dave in a headlock right now. I know. <laughs> Come on, Dave. I'm just I'm threatened by his brain. <laughs> Fuck you. 
I just think forward forward momentum is is key, and to, mm-hmm. as long as you apply yourself uh, and you're learning, it's going to come back into play at some point. Yeah, know? and yeah, I think- but you've also got to immerse yourself in in people who are have been there before, or who are um, who have educated themselves on on what's been thought and said before you. I mean that that's important because a lot of times, you know, my buddy said, well, I said, well, he's been doing jujitsu for so long. How can he not be good? And he said, my, my mother's been driving for 40 years. So she's <laughs> still not a good fucking driver. You know, yes, you know, practice makes permanent. doesn't necessarily make, make perfect. perfect. You got to Perfect know. practice yeah. makes perfect. Yeah. But that's so, the benefit of like, you know, you learning jujitsu from someone like Kieran, right? He can yeah. take all of those years of work and sum it up in one principle. Yes. Control the heads and hit, head and yeah, hips. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. The, and Josh Waitzman calls it chunking. Like he can. Yeah. He can with actually he's actually an amazing grappler and, and and with chess too he could see what you were gonna do, he's he's been there before he's recognized those so he can chunk huge pieces of information whereas for most of us it's piecemeal it's just like being fluent in in that language yeah there's a there's a famous study that was done by this Dutch scientist named De Groot right and he <clears> basically he took chess boards and he would lay out the pieces on the chessboard. And if you take someone who's a really good chess player, they can memorize that board instantly. Yeah. And but if you then take a chessboard and you arrange the pieces in a in an illegal combination in a set of moves that isn't possible in chess, their memory is no better than an average person's. Yep. yep. So, because they're de- it's a it's a, uh, a pattern. It's yeah, that's pattern. right. But you it's and that's that really tells you so much about learning and in terms of what you're saying with Michelle Thomas and all that stuff. It's all about really understanding it's Michel the pattern. Thomas, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Do you want to say Savant again? Yes, Savant <laughs> and Michel Thomas. He's fucking dropping all the French names over there, David. Um, um but yeah. yeah, it's understanding like what's the pattern, how does this really work? And I mean, you know But that takes the mystery. That's what's what's great about that is it takes the mystery out of learning. It doesn't create doesn't make it such a huge mountain. Mm-hmm. So much of what stops us is this notion of the, the mystery of you know, Jesus, man, he's got, he's really smart. That guy yeah. went to Harvard. He's got all – well, no, no, no. Hold on. There's a, there's a system. It's just like being educated. Mm-hmm. Educate, if you look at academics, they actually all speak the same language. Well, that and, They've followed the same trajectory, and then they, they, they branch off into their specialities, you know? And they, they know how to ask the same sort of questions. Like, they're historians. Like, when you study historians, they always ask the same sort of questions. Like, who's the author? What's their perspective? What's their bias? Mm-hmm. What events mm-hmm. happened before? What's the context? And then, you know, and I mean, that's the thing is, is that, you know, Dave's not going to tell us, but right now he's probably like, he has a few key principles that he comes back to as he reverse engineers techniques and tricks and all that sort of stuff. But he, the magician doesn't yeah. you're, looking, you're looking at me in a weird way. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you. Like, well, what, what is David Kwong up to right well, now? Well, yeah, because I was going to ask you this. Well, um, the, being a magician, I know David Blaine. I've been around him enough when he's wowed a lot of people. And, and one of the things I know is that there, he has a very good understanding of how most people emotionally relate to the world. They, they, they have certain things you can – you can predict certain things about people, most of us, um, when we went through a traumatic time, when was the most influential time of our lives, what are we going to look at, what are we not going to look at, what are we going to notice, depending on what you do, versus what, what, are, the, what, are, what are you not going to notice, that, th- those kinds of things. How do you suggest something to somebody without letting them know you're doing that mm-hmm. right so you get a real sense probably of human be, yeah we all we all look at the world magicians look at the world in a different way we certainly uh take advantage of situations and we're we're aware of what other people's Tendencies. perceptions are and yeah, ten- yeah mm-hmm. okay, sure and do you have to tailor that to an audience to a certain extent? Like, do you pick up, like, in the same way that a comedian, a stand-up yeah, comedian has to I read the room? Yeah, I bet you do. I mean, I certainly think st- audiences are very different, although with a magic trick, it's pretty immovable. It's pr- I mean, and it's right? probably yeah, fairly you know, universal. You, yeah, you know which audience members to, to choose. You, you know mm-hmm. who will react well to something. I mean, look mm-hmm. at hypnotists, right? Hypnotists, yeah. they, they have to narrow down their subjects to they, – they call up 20 people on stage and they, you know, end up with – the, the top six people who are the most suggestible. Mm-hmm. Is that what it is? Is does is does <laughs> hypnotism really work? So you want to look out yeah. for strippers. I mean, we basically. don't fully understand it, but yeah, it really you works. see people actually humping and having orgasms on stage, humping yeah. a chair. Is yeah. that really true, or is she just? I mean, it's a it's a mix of things. It's some some people are really susceptible to it. Other people, they're playing along because they yeah. don't want to they don't want to break the the wall, but um, you know, every, but you could argue it's all the same thing. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, every everything. I certainly think I always talk about stand-up comedy as a magic trick in a way, and actors always talk about my bag of tricks. 
uh, you know, d- so um, um, when when Daniel Day Lewis was saying people want to know what my process is because they want to know what the machinations are behind the magic. Well, look, man, I I basically do what I do, which means I wear other people's clothes and say other people's lines, surrounded by fifty other strangers for three months because I'm basically ashamed of being a boring middle class Englishman, <laughs> tired of myself. It's not fun. I'd rather be somebody <laughs> else. Bingo. So if I stuck flowers up my ass and did cartwheels and that was my process, who gives a shit? He goes, it doesn't matter. What matters is the end result. Stand up is the exact same way. When I got you, I've got you thinking one thing and I'm going to turn it on you in another way. I'm, 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 you're, you're, you're with me and then you yeah. think I'm going here and I go here. And it's, what actually makes you laugh a lot of times is surprise. It's storytelling, man. It's yeah. all storytelling. Yeah. And that's what, that's what a good magic trick does. Right, that's what a good puzzle does. A good story does. A good movie does. Yeah, Yeah. it's revelations. Yeah, revelations. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and now you see me is the perfect combination of all those. Yeah, that 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 movie really does operate like a puzzle. All these pieces kind of in plain view, and they all come together at the end. There's twists and turns. And we have an endless appetite for that as human beings. Endless. And what's amazing is there's an infinite, there's an infinite combinations of that if Mm -hmm. it's done well, right? Yeah. And even the simplest of all card tricks, if, if you tell the right story. You know, it, it it's more effective than if you were just demonstrating the dexterity of, of your fingers. Yeah. But if you're yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're taking a you're taking a king and you're moving it through a pack of cards, you know, there's a story to tell there. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, my even David was David Blaine was doing magic for my five year old, and so I got another my friend's five year old, and yeah. the, he had them involved in it. You know, they were kind of choosing and they were saying what they wanted and stuff, but they were so wowed yeah. by they didn't even know what the hell was going on. You know. And that never leaves you, man. In a way, magic brings out the child, child in all of us. us. <laughs> Thank you for echoing me. Children, Thank you for children sometimes will, will bust, that's the term we use, like bust the trick uh, yeah. easier than, than, than adults. Yeah, because they're, they're, not, not, they're not as misdirected the same way. They don't mm-hmm. have the same assumptions. They're more open. Yeah, they're like, you have two cards. I'm like, damn, <laughs> damn you, child. <laughs> damn it. No so you, fucking children. You get heckled yeah. by five-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, what is this kid doing in my living room right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is weird. <laughs> I'm trying to practice. I got some strange five-year-old in my living room. This is paranormal activity six. <laughs> so weird. Uh, can you levitate? Not really. I can do the... Oh, uh, my God. He just started levitating right yeah. now. Yeah. Jesus. Holy shit. <laughs> and by levitating, I mean his dick. <laughs> <laughs> we were having sex in the I had to bring it down to the level wow. of a goat. Yeah. <laughs> See what I mean, David? Yeah. I'm multifaceted too, motherfucker. I can go high and I can go low. Really low. No pun yeah. intended. <laughs> God, we're killing it. I wonder if people are holding their stomachs laughing. Did you learn anything out there? <laughs> no response. No response. We don't have any. Yeah, it's not a live show. Um, so what is you want to just keep doing more of this? Yeah, the um, the the, the one man show. It's called the Lexicon. It's uh, it's it's a basically a puzzle based magic show. And what I do is I perform uh, ten or so different tricks. They all have a a hanging piece of a puzzle. You may not realize it at the time, but they all add up to something at the end. So this is this has been my. But give me an example, like like you have do a it Scrabble anyway. trick, right? Yes, oh, that's that's a great example. Um, I will uh, borrow a dollar bill from the audience uh, early in the show. I'll do a trick with it, and then that's that's a lot of what I, what I do is I do a trick with something, and that miniature story's over. It mm-hmm. goes to completion. People are satisfied because that dollar bill has disappeared and has reappeared in an impossible location, like in a piece of fruit or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then maybe 20 minutes later in the show, I'll do another trick. Um, I do this thing with Scrabble tiles, and uh, and I'll form all these words, and then I assign numerical values to the Scrabble tiles, right? Like S is 1, T is 1, V is 4. Uh, and those letters will add up to a uh, eight-digit number, which is the serial number of the dollar bill from 20 minutes ago. Jeez. So it's kind of this... Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Th- everything's, awesome. everything's tied together. That, I'm glad you explained that because yeah. it's hard to really understand what the fuck you're talking about with magic and puzzles. I mean, it's, it's you know... Yeah. I'm like, all right. I don't know. But it's always... I mean, it's the same thing as a good movie or a good story. It's layers within you're layers. You're connecting, yeah. connecting within the layers dots. Within yeah. layers. It's yeah. like Pi. It's like the movie yeah. Pi. The, 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 the number for life. <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> Way to go, Brian. I was just all magic. <laughs> do you play Scrabble at all? Yeah, I do. I lose all the time. How about that? Are you lose a words with friends guy? What's that? Or are you a words with friends guy? What, what do you mean? 
Do you like Words with Friends or Scrabble? Or oh, maybe oh. you're a banana. Uh, Words with Friends well, is an app that well, the cool kids are playing oh. nowadays. Yeah, Technology. don't do any of that. All right, don't <laughs> yeah. do any of that. I'm not a big you gamer. The iPhone. Yeah, I got the yeah. iPhone. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I do is I play Temple Run, but I I get beat by my daughter, so I don't do it anymore. <laughs> Fuck that stupid game. I hate video games. Are you a gamer? Uh, not not in the. You used to be digital here. sense, yeah. yeah. Okay, More I'm in, surprised. Like crossword, more in the parlor sense. Person, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays a mean hand of gin rummy. Yeah. <laughs> As he sucks on his pipe. <laughs> Come on in, young man. I went to Harvard. Do you ever say Harvard? No, I don't. All right, Kennedy did. <laughs> Kennedy did. Um, well, uh, it's that time. I think, and uh, I think we covered nothing, and I appreciate that. <laughs> and, and, as usual, ladies and gentlemen, you wasted another hour of your fucking day on the Brian Callen Show. When Hope you could you have done one twenty-fourth of the Saturday crossword. Right? That's exactly right. Um, oh, and to, for all my fans out there, I do a podcast with Brendan Schaub here and there called The Fighter and the Kid, because I'm the kid and he's a fighter. And uh, we just break down the UFC and stuff, and, getting, and it's been doing really well. So uh, thanks for listening out there everybody David do you have anything you want to plug I would just say uh, check out some some cool magic puzzle videos online if you, if I you, like if it. you go to my website davidkwongmagic.com or just search on, on, on YouTube for um, uh, David Kwong and you'll you'll find a cool video with uh, Will Shorts you'll find uh, one uh, with Reggie Watts I did a very cool uh, code based magic trick with him nice mm-hmm. and, so check him um, out the Scrabble trick is cool too so, good yeah and Mott's, get Hunter Mott's and Katie O'Brien's book, The Straight A Conspiracy, um, especially if you have children. It's very helpful. All right? And you can thank me uh, <laughs> when you see me at my show in Schaumburg, Illinois. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just outside of Chicago, I'll be there. Whatever you do, I won't be able to do a podcast here because I'll be in Schaumburg at the Improv. The Schaumburg Improv. And I'll be doing freaking um, stand-up on the... Uh, well, where's my phone? Where is my phone? Anyone? I'll be doing stand-up, uh, just look at my website, BrianCallen.com, but it's July 24th, 25th, 26th, I believe. Uh, that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I'm excited. I got a question for you. Sure. Do you want your wallet back? Ah, oh, you, <laughs> you bastard. I was like, where is, how did that, wait, how did that happen? I just saw it here. Magic doesn't work on the radio, but I did take your wallet. You did take my wallet. Yeah. That's very impressive. He stole my wallet. Oh, damn it. Where's my phone? I think you just misplaced that. I don't think that was magic. I'm afraid I, think that was I don't know, and it's you've fire. left it in your car. Yeah. He's a genius. He got me to forget my phone in my fucking car. <laughs> David Kwong, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, here all week. Enjoy your fruit compo. <laughs> um, that's our time, ladies and gentlemen. We could just keep on talking. What time is it right now? How long have we talked for? 46. 46 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Man, we got a lot of ground covered. Congrats on Harvard, you both, you fucking super nerds. I'm going to fucking get Moss, you're looking, you're Dutch. You got some, you, when you were running around, you were running across the thing, and Brennan Schaub, you were in a pair of khaki shorts with your shirt tucked in, and Brennan Schaub goes, kid's got quite a tailpiece on him. How about that tailpiece? Got a big ass on him. I mean, it's a muscular ass. It's not like it's a, you know, girly butt. A badonkadonk. You got, yeah, you got some badonkadonk. <laughs> Bring it in full circle, which is not a Scrabble word. It's not in one of David Kwong's puzzles. The badonkadonk. Thank you for your tailpiece, and thank you for your Dutch bone structure and your brain, Hunter Motson. Thank you for bringing your friend David Kwong on the Brian Callen Show, the mother of all podcasts, the podcast that won number one podcast of all time by the International Podcast slash Magician slash Crosswood Puzzle Association. (laughs) I just followed my own fucking spit. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Brian Callen Show. Be sure to visit briancallen.com for information about this episode as well as past and future episodes. You can follow Brian on Twitter at Brian Callen and like him on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash briancallencomedy. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next time.